We have a report tonight about an unattractive part of the country's landscape that may also be hazardous to your health. In the late 1980s, news reports that electromagnetic fields from power lines could spark a cancer epidemic new and troubling evidence had the public and the power companies running scared. Is there a cancer risk associated with electric power lines? Magnetic fields may cause cancer, especially in children. This may be as significant as anything that's happened since the understanding that smoking causes cancer. Once something like this becomes part of our collective memory, there is no way to remove it from that memory. Suspicion that power lines posed some kind of invisible health threat had been brewing before scientists looked at the question seriously. A new high voltage line over Minnesota farmland has people so angry, they've even written a song. This line is dangerous to us, to our families and to our farm animals. I think early on, the story was, isn't it amazing to consider that something that we ignored that seems so innocuous might be harmful? David Savitz published one of the first rigorous field studies in 1987, measuring electromagnetic field levels in the homes of Denver children with cancer. The results were disturbing. A recent study in Denver found that children who live in homes with higher magnetic fields are twice as likely to develop cancer as those who do not. In the absence of a large body of research, each study is a breakthrough, is dramatic. The potential danger from electromagnetic fields is making millions of human beings into test animals. That from author Paul Broder. Studies show that these fields are extremely hazardous to human health. A positive finding can result in an immediate reaction, sort of the moment of panic. As electricity passes through power lines, it generates an electromagnetic field, or EMF. A danger close to home and hard to get away from. Seven children here had cancer, and some parents suspect the high voltage lines near the elementary school. America's love affair with electricity may have already produced an unintended tragedy of enormous proportions. More than two decades later, the fear persists in many places where transmission towers cast shadows on backyards. It used to be the biggest concern that I had was keeping them safe from the sun damage, and now I worry about exposing them to EMFs <laughs> whenever we go outside. Anne's husband, Dave Slapperud, tracks the EMF readings around the house. It's bouncing up just around 10 to 27 back here. This is where the kids play. But after decades of study, the man who helped put EMFs on the map believes the safety question has largely been answered. Over time, as the body of research grew, the importance of our study overall diminished. The line of logic was that these fields are very common and that the logical prediction would be that this would be a major public health problem. And that was simply wrong. So why does the idea that power lines pose a major public health problem persist today? Stop the power lines. Save our property. So would you want power lines running through your neighborhood or hanging over your head? Some of it stems from the difficulty in interpreting evidence that's suggestive, yet also faint. Savitz and a few later researchers did find a small association between power lines and childhood leukemia. And this left some, like David Carpenter, convinced a serious hazard exists. It doesn't mean that every child in high magnetic field exposure is going to get leukemia, but it means twice as many as the background rate. Childhood leukemia may be a dread disease, but it remains extremely rare, normally affecting about one in 20,000 children a year. Even if EMFs double the risk for highly exposed children, that number would be no more than two in 20,000. And with numbers that small, it's hard to know for sure if the studies are measuring any effect at all. The likely impact of electromagnetic fields, if I had to pick a single number that is the most likely, it would be zero. That is, it's quite questionable whether these fields cause leukemia at all. Epidemiology cannot answer the question, could there be a little risk? I think we can say without question that power lines, the fields from power lines, are not a major public health threat. 
scientists in the 1990s conducted hundreds of laboratory experiments, exposing human and animal cells to EMFs, looking for any way the fields might harm living tissue. In 20 years of looking, no one has found a way that power line fields can do anything at all to cells or animals. And unless it can do something, there's no way it can cause cancer. And that confirmed what many researchers have been saying since the National Academy of Sciences reviewed 500 studies on EMFs and made news with its verdict. What they found was very reassuring. The Blue Ribbon Panel did not waffle in its conclusion. Electromagnetic radiation from power lines outside the home is not something we need to worry about. Yet anxieties about power lines have found a seemingly permanent home in the popular imagination. When you're looking for a new home, you don't always get the complete picture. But now there's homepages.com. Welcome to the neighborhood. This risk really hit the sweet spot of what was going to make people afraid. This was just waiting to be whacked out of the park emotionally. Roe Peak says there is a reason the fear of power line EMFs has lodged itself so firmly in the public mind. Social scientists have described a set of factors that cause human beings to dread certain kinds of risks more than others. The list includes risks that people can't see or control, risks that could lead to suffering before death, and risks that might affect children. Sound familiar? They're invisible and just about everywhere. Do we play Russian roulette with people's children? Should you be taking steps to keep your kids away from electromagnetic fields? This had and has a long list of personality traits that make it really scary. And whatever new, potentially reassuring information emerges, the memory of that invisible threat remains. You never really get unscared about anything. Anything that rings that bell shakes that web of neurons in your brain and that memory comes back. And that memory was formed with a little extra oomph because it was about survival. When you're focusing on that bottom line of what can I do to improve my health, it comes down to a series of rather boring things about, you know, wearing seat belts and not smoking, not being overweight. And nobody wants to hear about those because they're so obvious and we already know those. We're always looking for the next frontier. 